Welcome to Mad Science Films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. And as ever, I'm joined by my powerful co host, James Morrissey, one of the Mad Science Films team. How are you? So, guys, before we crack on with the show, if you like to this, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. If you've been enjoying the Mad Science content, then want to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. If you have any comments or suggestions, we'll leave those in the comments. I said that again. If you have any comments or suggestions, then leave those comments in the comment section down below. Let's crack on with the show. Uh, also, guys, please check out our fourth feature film for free on YouTube, or even give us a bit of money on Amazon Prime in the UK. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This week, we are back campaigning for a forgotten masterpiece of genre cinema to be given the exquisite Blu-ray treatment. And this week, hold your horses, guys. It's not my choice. It's not Jim's choice. We have a viewer recommendation episode. So, very kind, sir. Stephen Wales got in touch via Instagram and suggested... Oh, that's right. Fright Night 2. Directed by Tommy Lee Wallace from 1988. So, Jim... I shall do a synopsis. Are you are you prepared for this synopsis? Shall I do it? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Get, get comfy. Ready? Everybody get comfy in a chair. Let me tell you a story. Charlie Brewster and Peter Vincent must face more vampires out for revenge. Yeah, that that's 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 oh, all, <laughs> all you get. God bless IMDB. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's Fright Night Part Two. If you're watching Fright Night Part 2, I'm hoping you've seen Fright Night Part 1, and therefore that synopsis pretty much tells you what's going on without getting into spoilers. So, Jim, I'm assuming this is a first-time watch. Oh, I've seen this film many a times, and uh, it keeps getting better. Just such a good sequel. And what I really, what really disheartens me sometimes when I watch a sequel, it's, it, it kind of loses its um it's feel of the first and i think the first one was such a cool film the music the score the acting the storyline all of it and it's the same in this one it's carried over and i what really helped i think with the sequel and and retaining that kind of feel and that kind of fright night universe is the music and having brad back to do the score yeah. was such a really big decision an important decision i think uh, for this as well and i think uh, tommy lee wallace did a great job of carrying on from uh, mr holland so it had everything of the first and i think it tried then to twist and change it a bit it felt a bit bigger than the first as well you had a few more bad guys as yep. well I think they were strong characters too the bad these the, the bad guys what were Absolutely. They called? yep yep uh, yeah brian thompson who did a great job one of my favorite actors of all time brian thompson yeah. i mean he is a great supporting character actor you know way back in the yeah. first terminator uh, he's like his own B movie star as well. This was his only his second, I think, credit or third. I don't think he'd done much. I think he did Terminator before this. Right. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then after this, he absolutely blossoms into his own like, yeah, no, he action did. hero and all of that. But yeah, I, I not only do I love Brian Thompson, but I love his character. It's this weird, creepy ghoul guy yeah. called Bosworth, and he's like eating Brilliant. bugs and shit. Mm, it's yeah. just. It's brilliant. Um, absolutely, man. That, that, that really struck me watching it, like watching it for a review rather than just consuming it as a consumer and just really thinking about the film as a film and just thinking, yeah, well, yeah I, I, I've kind of always known it, but just really hit me like how good the supporting characters are. So I, just, I, think, I, think, I think that's linked to something you said earlier, man. So, yeah, it's... I absolutely agree. Um, I think Fright Night Part 2 does what the best sequels do is it takes the original it's absolutely faithful to the original builds upon it becomes bigger 
but then also subvert some of your expectations. And I think like you were talking about, so like in the, in the original one, obviously you get Chris Sarandon as the main vampire. Then you have that other guy who's kind of his Renfield, you know, daytime character. And then he converts evil Ed into, into, you know, a baddie as well. This one, it it kind of comes with a a pre-done gang of different monsters. Um, And it felt very almost Monster Squad-esque, which is kind of funny because obviously uh, the werewolf character, who's hilarious in this, uh, John Greaves, uh, plays the werewolf, also obviously played the wolfman in Monster Squad. So, you know, it's building upon all of this. Uh, Yeah, Brian Thompson, as we mentioned before, uh, and the amazing Russell Clark as this kind of transvestite, transgender vampire character called Belle as well. So... Yeah, it builds upon that. It, it you know um, gets it, and, and and like we were saying about it. I mean, everything. Yeah, it opens up. It, it's a bigger film. Like the first one, he's in high school, and it's really just about him and his neighbor. This one, he's in college, and it's it's got a much bigger scope. You know, it's not just his house and his neighbor's house. You know, it's dorm rooms, the library, all these other things. It opens it up into the park as well, the party and everything else. It's like on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but what it also does well in terms of, it, you know, it's not just bigger and better. You know, that that would kind of be the Die Hard 2 Die Harder route where it's, we're just going to make it bigger, motherfucker, which works sometimes, admittedly. This one also, though, flips things. Um, and I think the, the best way it flips stuff is by recasting the main villain from a male character. Um, and again, Chris Sarandon in the first one's brilliant and he seduces, um, you know, Charlie's girlfriend in the first one and then converts her. In this one, it's a female character uh, played by Julie Carmen. Um, and so, yeah, uh, you know, it's Charlie himself then who's kind of like hypnotized and enthralled yeah. by her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, it's just really good, mate. It's just a really good film. Um, it looked great. I love the special effects in it. It's a really cool one. It's a really good comedic moment. And uh, I love... For me, the, the werewolf character is just hilarious because he's just horny the whole fucking time. And he's yeah. not really interested in the main plan. He just kind of wants to hook up with the girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, there's not much more to see because I mean, again, if you've like if you've watched the original, uh, you'll absolutely love this. Like if you if you grew up watching the original and loving the original, and you're just finding out about the sequel, I wish I was in your shoes because yeah. this is an absolute gift to you. This is a really really good sequel. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Because I mean, obviously, it's really hard to get hold of yeah. on any sort of decent legal copy uh so there is i think it's a german or at least it's, it's european blu-ray out there bare bones release of fright night 2 um fright night 1 has a really nice release by eureka uh us growing up you know fright night 2 came out on video and yeah, well, we watched it you know alongside and and again like you know the the the, there were two like really well-known posters one which was always, almost like a variation on the vamp poster which was just like eyes you know feminine eyes and, and fangs and then there was the one which again kind of expanded on the front night one poster so Friday night one has these like vampiric clouds over his like you know his uh, suburban house and the other one has it on oh yeah jim there you go and then so hey other arm jim you're gonna get Friday night two done now has like his dorm block um fantastic fantastic well done but what i did want to say is again something that happens with a lot of the sequels is because the first story is so well told often they just have to reset the clock and find excuses for why this whole thing has to happen again number two obviously they have the revenge element so you know julie carmen is getting revenge on chris sarandon's character in the first one because you know he was he was you know killed by charlie um and Charlie is convinced by his psychiatrist. And again, I I completely bought this as the time because you didn't get a lot of horror sequels where it was the heroes of the film survived to the next one. You think about the the horror franchises, you know, your Chucky's, all of the, um, you know, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Jason. It didn't, you didn't tend to see the final girls in the sequels, you saw the monsters. So to see Charlie, like convinced it was all part of his imagination and everything like that, that's a great setup to you know start the ball rolling yeah. and get him yeah. in yeah. he needs to be then to be yeah. turned into yeah a vampire's mate basically the one thing which i I'm, I'm not crazy about in this film and i think it was a step too far 
is the fact that the the psychologist is is a, a, a monster as well. I think they could have kept the psychologist, you know, as, as a straight psychiatrist, right? And that been absolutely fine. And and it kind of undermined the fact that, you know, oh yeah, you know, the psychiatrist brainwashed him into believing it. Where I was like, yeah, that's I see, I, I kind I I thought maybe it was a very loose way like I, I wondered whether or not it was part of the bigger picture like maybe he was put in place to convince him vampires aren't real to so make him more of an easy target for uh the sister um dandridge's sister yeah. so i wonder whether it's a bigger kind of uh thing I going so. on yeah, I, but, I, but, I, but, but yeah. I don't i don't think you needed it i think you know yeah. In, in the real world, yes, you would be sent to psychiatrists after something as traumatic as that happens. And yes, they're not going to tell you it's a vampire. They're going to say it's a serial killer. And of course, it had an effect yeah. on you. And of course, if you're hanging around with Peter Vincent, you know, movie oh, yeah, vampire yeah. killer, that's how your brain's going to Which do I enjoyed in this having Roddy McDowell as Peter Vincent running around like the schizophrenic lunatic, you know, yeah. stuck in his own little world. Uh, I love that. And he that, again, very, flipping it, flipping it from the first one, where it was Charlie who had to convince Peter yeah. what was happening. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, hats off to Tommy Lee Wallace. Uh, it's a gorgeous looking film. It's beautifully lit. Yeah. It's difficult for me, right? Like, are we saying Friday Night 2 is better than Friday Night 1? I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's better, but I would. It's like there, isn't it? Like it's 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 kind of its own film in in a you know in 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 a large way. But it's. Do you know what? It's. I think it's a remix, it's isn't not, it? It's it's almost a remix of the first one. In yeah, that, yeah. It's got the same elements, but things have been flipped. Things have been tweaked or whatever. Um, I just think it's, I think it's like if they decided to go big with Fright Night, they, that's how Fright Night would have loved Fright Night 2, which they did, which kind of makes no sense. But it's just a bigger version, but they did it really well. But I kind of like the smaller, more paranoia kind of world of the original, where it's just Charlie and the neighbor. So it's a different, yeah, yeah it's different. It's just different, I think. It's just different. I would, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I say, I think for me, the thing that, tips it maybe and, I, and, and by saying it's better i'm not saying the first one is shit believe me no yeah. but i'm saying it might be like half a point better in my eyes yeah because i love the gang of monsters oh yeah 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 it has but you couldn't do that without having the first one so yeah, yeah it's it's kind of a it is really good it's a really good sequel that really does stand up by itself um, but I think obviously the first one had to be made to have that tone feeling, that yeah. world for yeah. this to exist. So, Absolutely. yeah. But it, right, it's brilliant as a sequel. All righty. Well, I think, you know, we've gushed and faffed enough about Fright Night 2. Jim, what label should we pester, beg, and swear our firstborns to? To be honest, mate, I, I don't know why there's not a huge queue for this uh, film. I've gone for 88 films. Um, I think there'd be 88, Eureka, Arrow, Second Sight. You do a lot of horror, 80s horrors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, these, these, it seems as though when I was doing the research, like there's a lot with really good 80s horror sections, and I think it would just fit right in. It's, um, a, it would, it, it, it's an easy one to take on board. And if you do a double, that would be amazing double pack when they're Friday night one and two the originals so Any documentary. Eureka put out a good a really good release of the yeah. first one uh which includes uh the two-hour documentary you're so cool uh yeah. Brewster mm. so yeah I mean for me ideally Eureka and you know hopefully put as much love and care into that package but good good point with second sight actually man yeah. second sight again have been putting well. out a lot of really good quality 80s lesser known stuff i mean i i think i think i think if you're a label and you got the resources to make a really good double pack friday night one and two with all additional content that would do very well particularly yeah. amongst you know hardcore 80s horror fans like ourselves like yeah. i would pick that up tomorrow like it, it kind, of, kind of like what they did with uh demons one and two from Fuck. Yeah, yeah, that was brilliant, mate. Double Blu-ray, and it had the grain in the print, and it was really nice, and it just took me back to the fucking VHS tapes. You know what I mean? You could really see it, and it was, it was and all the additional content, which is brilliant. So if they could do that, that's an absolute winner 
Yeah, I, I'm trying to I, I'm trying to remember because I know we had this conversation a couple of years ago as well, didn't we? When we were yeah, like trying to get hold of Fright Night Two, and mm. I I, I want to say it was something to do with music rights. Yeah, I think so, maybe something about music. Yeah, it was an issue. I, I've got a feeling, you know, a, a bit of money will need to be kind of thrown at things to kind of resolve that issue. Um, yeah. But I mean, based it must on be something. The must love be. of the first film. I mean, the first one is legitimately an '80s cult classic. Classic, massive, yeah. The second one, you know, is is either here or there, right? And for a lot of fans mm. younger than ourselves, is this undiscovered gem as well? So I would say that's a a good investment for, and plus, you know, add in Tommy Lee Wallace, um, which you know will bring me on to my recommendations. He's got his own work yeah, body yeah, of work of horror yeah, stuff yeah, as yeah, well yeah. so yeah. i think you know you're firing on the, the fans of this one fans of tommy lee wallace and fans of obscure stuff that they haven't been able to get their hands on you know a decent mm. copy for a long long time so yeah yeah huge noise noise so jim you've watched fright night too what are you going to do to follow up on this night of b-movie bliss well, I mean, what what a marathon of films this would uh, lead into because there's so many cool 80s vampire films. So I've just picked a few 80s classic vampire films. Nice. You, you probably got these in yours. It's just, uh, I would, I mean, I definitely watch them like Vamp because that is such a class one. You love Vamp. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I like Vamp a lot, but you love uh, Vamp, man. It's so fucking cheesy. It's such is a it, cheesy is, it, is it also because you met Dee Dee? DD Pfeiffer, yes, yes, I did meet Dee. I don't think I'd meet Dee. I think she might have looked my way and I might have said, and then that was it. Uh, but yeah, such a brilliant, cool 80s cheesy uh, vampire horror film. Um, and of course, you've got the Grace Jones being the, you know, the queen vampire. So we kind of keep in that same vein as Fright Night 2. Yeah. Near Dark, check that out. That's a good oh, class. Yeah, that, one, one of my favorite 80s vampire films of all time. Yeah. Definitely could call. And Lost Boys, because I just love Lost Boys. Why the fuck not? Yeah. Uh, but if you go in on the Tommy Lee Wallace kind of route, uh, we've done a lot with Cam, but didn't he, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace? And I think that's helped him with his directing, mm-hmm. to be honest. He's learned from a master there. Um, and it's he's done a few popular sequels. Well, he's done one popular sequel, uh, and that's Halloween Three. Uh, go check that out. Um, it as well with uh, Mr. Curry, and uh, and obviously go watch the original because yeah, you should do. Awesome, yeah, good recommendations, dude. I've gone a slightly different route. I've gone for like eighties, early nineties horror sequels, uh, which feel cool. very much in the same vein so again if you want to take it from like suburban uh originals to opening it out go with gremlins 2 man i yes. really love gremlins 2 and again maybe better than gremlins why you know it kind of opens up the world um yeah gremlins 2 i think is a perfect uh kind of expansion of the original messing around subverting the original uh and just goes batshit crazy um so yeah, yeah. Also, Waxworks 2, a.k.a. Lost in Time. Uh, yeah. Again, another one where I love the original one, but I love just the weird way that they spin off the concept of the original uh, and open it up. And plus, you know, extra Bruce Campbell in, in uh, Waxworks 2. So, you know, and a great Dawn of the Dead kind of uh, spin off there too. So, yeah, absolutely that. So this one, you, you you said Halloween 3, so I'm going to kind of go Tommy Lee Wallace adjacent. So obviously, there's kind of like this trinity of uh, John Carpenter, Tommy Lee Wallace, and then Nick Castle, who all obviously worked very closely together on the original Halloween. Nick Castle obviously then went on to direct one of my favourite 80s movies of all time, The Last Starfighter. Um, again, 80s perfection, just a great concept. You know, um, kid from you know yeah. small town America becomes savior of the universe. Fantastic man, great score. Yeah. One of those scores which is kind of like synth meets like Jerry Goldsmith orchestral. Yeah, magnificent. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, any of those would pair nicely, like fine wine and fish uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Friday Night Two. So yeah, there we go, guys. So have you guys seen Fright Night 2? 
what do you reckon would go nicely with a Fright Night 2 double bill? Uh, or, or are there any other films that aren't yet out on Blu-ray that you think we should campaign to get them released? And Jim, what else can people do? So guys, if you've liked this video, then please hit the like button. The likes do help the channel. Uh, if you've been enjoying the Mad Science Film content, then come subscribe and stalk us on Facebook. Any comments? Any losers in there? Fuck me. I should have if, if you have any comments, and please don't leave those comments in the comment section down below. Thank you and goodbye.